Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to get your system processor settings internal on the Behringer X32 so that you can remove the need for an external system processor for maybe a biamp or a left-right plus sub or even a triamp setup. So, if you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, in my last video, I showed you how to send to the matrix section. And so as a quick review, we can go ahead and select our left, right, mono, or any of our mix buses. We can then go to our bus sends, and we can see that we have our sends to the matrix section here. So if I was wanting to send more or less, I would just adjust the level in my sends. But this video is all about how to get system processor settings in the matrix section on the Behringer X32, which is actually really cool. So in my first example of this, I'm going to set up my X32 to feed a main PA, so left and right, plus a subwoofer. So my left and right is gonna be sent by my matrix one and two, and then my subwoofer is gonna be sent from matrix three. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to select my matrix three. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that up and let's go ahead and label this real quick. So I'm gonna go and label this sub. Okay, so we have my left, right, and my subwoofer. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to feed our subwoofer. So let's go ahead and go to my matrix section here and I'm going to select my left, right, and I'm going to feed this into matrix three by pressing view on the bus sends. So we can go ahead and turn that up to zero. So now what I have is I have my left, right feeding into all three of these. So if I go ahead and press play, I have it feeding into all of those. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up the EQ section on these matrix sections to be the system processor settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go and select my sub and I'm going to go to my EQ section and I'm gonna press equalizer and turn that on. So to utilize the matrix section for getting to these crossover settings, what we're gonna do is we're going to select our low and I'm going to then be able to rotate this all the way until we get to our system processor settings. So what these are going to be is this is going to be a Butterworth 6 dB per octave, and this is a 12 dB per octave. Um, and we have all of the different modes here. So the benefit of these is that we have all of these options available to us. So what we can do is we can go ahead and set this on the low side if we want to. So we can do a Butterworth 12, and we can set this for our subwoofers to have our high pass of this being about 35 hertz or 36 hertz. And then what we can do is we can go to our high band and then we can also go and select our all of our system crossover settings. So in this case, let's go ahead and do LR24. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this frequency to be at 100 hertz. 98 is close enough. So we can see that we have our low pass set to 98 and it is an LR24 band type. So now that we have these system processor settings set to our matrix three for sending to our subwoofers, what we can then do is we can go apply our system processor settings to our main PA here. So we're gonna go to our matrix one and two and we will turn on our EQ and then I will go down to my low band and I will go and select my LR24 like I had. And then I'm going to set this frequency to be the same. Now the beauty of the LR24 is we can set the system frequency to the same thing on both the subs and the main PA, and all of the crossover will be correct. If you're using a Butterworth, you'll have to do a little bit of math as far as to what frequency that you need to use. So in this case, let's make sure that we're using the LR24. So what I have now is that I have my main PA being fed from my left right bus, and then going into my matrix one and two for the main PA, and then the subwoofer is being sent off of matrix three. So no low-end information is going into my uh, main PA. 
and all of my low-end information is going into my subwoofer. So next thing that we need to do is we actually need to route this out to everything. So let's go to routing, and I'm going to choose my uh, first send being from nine. So let's go ahead and do matrix one coming from nine, and we'll want to have this set as post fader. That way, if I do adjust the volume here, it will adjust the volume of the send to that PA. So then we'll have XLR 10 being matrix two and 11 being matrix three. So we can see that on my main PA, I have nine and 10, and then I have my output 11 from my subwoofer. So let's go ahead and play some music and we'll give this a listen. So this is what my left right fader sounds like. And here is my sub. And here is my main PA without the sub. And if we get to a position in the song where there's a little bit more going on, there's my subwoofer, there's with the subwoofer, and the main PA, and then there's just the main PA. So that's as simple as it is for setting up a main left right plus a sub. But what if we had a biamp system where we had a high, a mid, and then we also wanted to have the subwoofer? Well, let's go ahead and set that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize my matrix three and four as my mid. So let's go ahead and get these set up for something different. So I'm going to go ahead and relabel these. So I have relabeled these. I have my high, my low, and my sub. So let's go ahead and get these linked together. So I need to select my matrix three. I'm going to press view in the configuration preempt section. I'm then going to link these together and confirm. So we now can turn that up to zero. We then have our subwoofer that I can turn also up to zero as well. So let's go ahead and actually get these routed now. So I'm going to go to my routing and I'm going to go to my nine and this is going to be my matrix one. And then we will have 10 be matrix two. We will have 11 be matrix three. And we will have 12 be matrix four. We'll have 13 be matrix five. So we can now see that we have nine as my nine and 10 as my high. We have 11 and 12 as my low. And then output 13 is my subwoofer. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set our EQ settings for our system processor for using this matrix section. Now, you would need to consult the manual of your specific PA for those crossover settings. But in this case, I'm going to just make some up. And for this case, I'm going to have my highs going all the way down to 500 hertz. And then my low is going to go from 500 hertz down to 100, where then my subwoofer will take over. So let's go ahead and get that EQ set up. So I'm going to press view on my EQ section, make sure to select my matrix one, and I'm going to set this LR24 at a frequency of around 500 hertz. So we have 496.6. That's going to be my crossover frequency. So next, we're going to go to my matrix three, and I'm going to set my high band as an LR24 to that same frequency. So we'll bring it all the way up until we get to that 496.6. Now remember that my my low drivers are only going down to 100 hertz, and that's where my subwoofers take the rest of the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the low. We're then going to set this to an LR24, and we're going to set this frequency to about 100 hertz, or that 98 is that special number here on the X32. So now we can see that I have my main high up here, my main low here, and then what we need to do is we need to program our subwoofer in. So I'm going to turn on my EQ section of my matrix five, go to my high, and then I'm going to adjust this to be our LR24, and we're going to set this frequency down to that 98 hertz. So we can see that I have my high, my low, and my sub. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we just need to feed the left right into these. So I'm going to press my select on my left right, go to view on my bus sends here, and we can see that I have my level one and two at zero, three and four at zero, and my level five will need to turn up to zero. So that now means that we have our left right fader feeding 
all of these matrix sections at unity gain across the board. So now we can go ahead and press play on my X Live card and we can listen to these different things. So here is my high. So remember, this is just this section up here. Everything down to 500 hertz. And then we have our low, which is everything between 100 and 500 hertz. And then we have our sub. And so then we can go and select multiple of these and listen to the different things. So there's sub plus low. And then we can add in our high section. Now, as far as the rest of the EQ bands go, we are limited to the amount of EQ that we have remaining on these settings for us. So we can see that when we select a crossover frequency, that it actually takes up band one and two. So we can go to our lows and we can see that we have taken up one and two and five and six to make these crossover frequencies. So the only remaining EQ adjustments I have on say my low section here is just my low mid and my high mid. So just bands three and four. But if I go to my subwoofer where I'm only using my high, I actually have all four of these bands available to me. And so same thing with my high, I still have my bands three, four, five, and six available to me. So you can still do a little bit of fine tuning on your PA if you need to. But then the very last thing is what about delay? Well, if we need to delay any of our speakers because of older technology, and then you actually have to delay those elements together, then what we can do is we can actually do that delay in our routing section of the X32. So we can see that I have my high here on nine and 10, and there is independent delay on each of these. So I can go and apply my delay at 10th of a millisecond increments, and I can go ahead and apply that delay here on the output section of the board. So for instance, if you needed to apply delay on your subwoofers to put them in time with your PA, because maybe your, your subwoofers are closer to the audience than your actual PA is, then what we can do is we can go down to our subwoofer send, and we can apply our delay of maybe say eight milliseconds. And so then we now have applied that delay on those subwoofers to put them back in time with the main PA. Now, the one downside of this is if you ever remove this console from your venue, well, then you've just needed to put in now a system processor or utilize that next board, like for instance, a Behringer wing. If you put in a Behringer wing, you could utilize the matrix section in the same way. Just know that if you ever have to swap out the board and you do remove that system processor, you will need to replace that system processor with something else, either another board that has the matrix section that can utilize the same function or just put in that old system processor that you had. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you happen to have any questions or ideas on videos that you want me to make in the future, drop that in the comment section below as I'm always looking through those comment sections to find new videos that you want me to make. If you did find this video helpful for you and you want to give back to me and just say thank you, consider becoming a member of my channel. It's just a way for you to give back to me financially and just saying thank you. Also, if you haven't checked out my website, go to drewbrashler.com to check out that for more articles, tips, and tricks that I have on all of this production stuff. Thank you so much and have a great day.